Welcome to Mission to Inspire, where we share life experiences in our careers, personal lives, society, culture, religion, finance, family, and much more. Meet your host, Shola Ajabadi, as she takes you on a ride to fuel your inspiration. to inspire you're welcome um our guest today is abiola Iluwale. hi abiola how are you i'm good thank you how are you i'm good you're welcome to our show thank you <laughs> abiola is the founder of the changer narrative changes england she is a seasoned human resource manager who is passionate about change she desires to work with young job seekers who are looking to discover their career fields. She is a firm believer of embracing diversity and specializes in recruitment consultation, trainings and opportunities for people from the wider black, Asian and minority ethnic groups. You're welcome, Abiola. Thank you. <laughs> What's a profile? You are into email resource. Yes, that's right. And you're using that actually for the wider Black Asian minority groups. Yes, <laughs> yes. We need, we need more of us. <laughs> <laughs> you're so right. How are you, though? How are thank you? Me. How have you been? Fine, thank you. It's Friday, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> So I'm just going to, we just, you know, we're going to ask you a few questions about yourself, but if you can just start by telling us a little bit about yourself so we can know you better. Okay, I'm just thinking that that's always a very tricky question when you hear, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm a mom of two. Um, I am um, an HR manager i okay. i fell in i fell in love with hr from um doing a course okay i i'm just trying to put my thoughts together so basically i fell into hr so i wouldn't say you know i've always wanted to be a human resource person it kind right. of just i i kind of just found it you know like some people when they're growing up they know exactly what they want to be mm -hmm. some people want to be a doctor some people wanted to be a lawyer you know people always know for instance, my husband always knew what he wanted to be right from a long time. And even right. when he went to uni, they gave me a different course and was like, no, I will stay one year because mm -hmm. this is what I wanted. Yeah. I was not like that. I literally didn't know what I wanted to do until I was 23, believe it or not. <laughs> I went to university because, you know, obviously when you're in secondary school, like, oh, you like to talk, you should be a journalist. You mm -hmm. like to talk, you should be a lawyer. And yeah. that's, you know. Um, so I just went along with everyone's suggestions and then um, did my jam, did my um, GS, GC, I can't remember what it's called now, GSC, sorry. Well, in Nigeria. Yeah, the Nigeria one. And why? SSC. Yeah. No, no, I think it's called GC. Yeah, it's GC. GC. Okay, okay, GC. Yeah, yes, GC. Yes, yes. Yeah. Wow, that's a long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> So I did my that was before the SSCE came into yeah I think and I did my work and I did my jam and I got into university um I put in for mass communication because obviously that's what everyone was saying to do yeah. um, but because I didn't make maths at that time right because I did my G GC in S in SS2 so mm -hmm. like before the final one yeah. so by the time I did my work in SS3 the result was not AL but I was already in university because I went to private uni so I was um. I was offered English language as a course. It's like, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, so I didn't mind. I just took it and just stayed doing it. Right. And when I finished year one, mm. they're like, oh, you know, now you can do mass comm because obviously we've seen that you can actually undo mass comm. But by yeah. that time, I already liked people in English. I already liked my lecturers. So I was mm. like, I don't want to switch again. So I just talked to him because it wasn't like that was what I wanted. If it probably was what I wanted, I would have said yes. But And then I, I finished up. Yeah. I came to England to do my master's yeah. and um, I did an MBA because that was mm -hmm. the course that I could get into at that time. Right. And then my second 
um, semester, we had the course on human resource. And it felt like, you know, it just it spoke to me. And I was like, wow, this is what I want to do. This is what you want to do. <laughs> it sounds perfect for me. And I, I started researching on it. And I remember coming back home and having a conversation with my mom. And I was like, ah, this is what I want to do. And because in e- England, you have to have like a certification for this. And yeah. my mom was like, I'm not about to pay. And I think at that time it was about 1,500. I can't remember. So like, okay. I'm not about to pay 1,500 pounds for this. You've not even finished the MBA that we just finished paying for. You now <laughs> said you want to come and do another one. But she saw how serious I was. I was babysitting for people. I make hair. So I was making hair. You mm. know, I was I was swapping getting the bus and working so I can save up more money. Yeah. So I was saving every money I could get. And I think wow. I saved about 800 pounds or something like that. And then I told her, she was like, where did you get where did you get money from? What did you do? <laughs> I know, you know, and then she saw how serious I was. Then mm. she added on the balance for me nice. to get that course. So I did my CIPD alongside my MBA, side wow. and side. Yeah, it's strong women. <laughs> When you find your passion, that's it. When you find that's your passion, it. you just yeah. get the drive. Exactly. I, and then I obviously this was 2014 now, and I've I've never looked back. So it was one of those things that found me. As in, I didn't think because I didn't know it about it. So that's why sometimes it's always good to expose our children and people to different career path. Oh, At that yes. time, mm. we're only exposed to being lawyers, journalists, doctors, accountants, economists. Those are major things we're exposed to. I never knew what human resource was. Like, yes. what is that? Until I was 20, 22. So I finally finished at 23. So, you know, it was like, wow, you know, and that was my journey into HR. So that's a little bit about myself. Um, yeah, I think I've digressed a little bit. Yeah. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, that is amazing. It just shows that no matter how old you are, you can yeah. still find your path. You can still find exactly. your career path in life. Exactly. Yeah. That is so amazing. Wow. <laughs> How you went from A to B. Exactly. And, got a and, B. and I'm sure the MBA that you did still helped you along the oh, way yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. Yes, definitely. Definitely did. I think I would say um, at the time I did my MBA though, because mm. I didn't have a lot of work experience. I just, you know, when we're coming from Nigeria at that time, you just do mm. a course. And especially if, if the school has sold the course to you, you yeah. just do it. You know, it doesn't matter where it's, whether it's in line, what you're doing and stuff like that. So for me, that was what it was. But going over the years now, mm-hmm. I would say that when I started moving into more management and senior roles, yes. that is when my MBA started coming into play. Because at the time I did it, I didn't have the work experience to equivalent the MBA, if right. that makes any sense. Yes. So along the years, when I did start getting my experience, I think I started working in 2014, 2015. Yes. So obviously working my way up the ladder. Mm-hmm. And now since 2019, then I can say, okay, effectively, I've been able to now combine my MBA career with this. Oh, um, exactly. So um, um, I've done um, worked in roles of being an HR business partner. So marrying HR and business um, objective and strategies together and making sure that it follows in line with the human resource part, making sure that we are in line with regulations, mm. you know, you know, breaking any laws and stuff like that. So, yeah, I would say. 2019 is when I started using the MBA I did in 2013, 2014. Which yeah. is amazing. So you didn't put it under the carpet. No, no, <laughs> no. No. No so, knowledge is lost. You just need to wait for the time to then, you know, effectively use it. Use no it. knowledge is lost whatsoever. No good knowledge, knowledge anyway. Lost. No yes. good Thank knowledge you so is much. lost. <laughs> yes, no knowledge is no, no knowledge is lost. Yes, you're so right. So um, your projects, I know you have this baby project that you're, you're so passionate about, which is, the, um, uh, which is the career narrative changes. Mm-hmm. What is it all about? So um, in the middle of the pandemic, actually at the, at the start of the pandemic, I was at a position whereby I had to deliver a lot of bad news. So I had to let a few people go at work. Um, 
I was seeing people were losing their job left, right, and center. You know, it was quite uncertain. A lot of people were being followed. There's mm. so many uncertainty going on in the world, and especially the hospitality team was um sector was very you know was hit hard at that time. And uh, at that po- uh, at that time in, in my career, I was seeing a lot of um CVs coming through the door, and um it was I I fell for them, but I was like you know this doesn't marry out with what I want in terms of recruitment wise so I think and also I was at the place whereby I was just not settled in my spirit really I'm a Christian for anyone that's watching obviously Mm -hmm. so I just wanted to I just wanted to do something in my own little way to kind of help if that makes any sense because I am not I'm not the forefront I'm not a nurse my mom is a nurse so every day we hear we couldn't see her but she was telling us how it was at the hospital and things mm-hmm. like that and I, yes. I really was wanted to do something to help people at that time even if I could couldn't physically treat anyone because yeah. that was not my profession so that was what bettered the career narrative changes so the idea behind the career narrative changes was to help you know people at that time mm. to understand what they needed to do um to bring out your transferable skills for some roles um changing one story at a time you know there's a lot of sad stories so sad news we nice. can't change the world in one day but we can do it one after the other and mm-hmm. there was a lot of um and also at that time as well just as the pandemic was gradually easing we saw an influx of you know immigration activity where the border was open and a lot of people were coming into the country and yes often and good one spouse is coming to be in the healthcare sector then what happens to the other spouse so mm-hmm. transitioning them into the british country and into the british um, corporate world you know right. it was important at that time because i i when i came into the country mm-hmm. i was working um in fcmb first city monument bank in nigeria okay. my job title at that time was platform assistant but what i was doing was supporting the marketing the um account managers so when right. they go in and bring bring out the clients they mm-hmm. hand over the client to me so more like a client relationship manager that was mm-hmm. my role yeah. but it was called platform assistant in nigeria and then i came to the uk and i put platform assistant on my cv and then i was applying to the bank because that was my environment that was where i was working i was applying to like companies and no one was calling me back no one was you know giving me the time because of the day there's nothing and, like that job title exactly there's nothing in the UK. like that job title <laughs> and when someone saw my cv i was like platform assistant they think you're working in the train station ah. you should be applying to the train station because that's where you find platforms and i was thinking no this is what i've done so when i spoke to her yes. and told her exactly what I was, she was like this is the wrong job title in this economy in this corporate oh, england sector yeah, yeah, this yeah. is called a relationship manager or a client client relationship manager or an account manager or something like that or you know a customer assistant or yes. a customer representative you know mm. different things depending on where you fall and once i changed that job title on my cv the difference was clear so it's helping people coming from that world into yes. this world bridge that gap because so many people are experienced where they're coming from but the language you're using on your cv your mannerism what you're saying you know you say something else we hear something else because you know you're communicating but if you're not if the communication is not effective then i'm not going to offer you the job because i don't know whether you can do it or not so that was what better the career narrative changes so me being like the bridge for those people and also you know showing um given opportunity because some people don't realize that they have so much opportunity out there and they just think this is the only thing I can do stereotypical you know I have to be in healthcare I have to be um, working in McDonald's I have to be a health care there's nothing wrong with it that's what you want to do but if you don't want to do that there's also a way and there's also another career path that you can follow you just need to know what to do about it and where to look so basically it's about um transferable skills Mm-hmm. from their present career or former career into something new which yes yeah 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 so how do you help them so um we help in different stage so there's different stages and different packages that we do so the first one is just looking at your cv and giving an honest review about it so you can send us a cv we can have a look at it and i can say okay um what what sector do you want to work 
what do you want to do and uh, what are the keywords because honestly right now a lot of companies are using algorithm to shortlist the cv and the algorithm is embedded to pick up keywords so we need to know and that's that if you're a stakeholder manager for instance oh that's where you want to work there's some um language that's common in that environment so if that is lacking in your cv no matter how great you are the system will not pick that up and you, in the only way you can actually defend your cv is to get in front of someone to interview and the only way you can get in front of someone to interview is making sure that you have the right words in your cv so we look at that look at your cv for you and then do that um second package we yeah. when you get your cv done and you get offered an interview mm -hmm. then we do an interview preparation with you obviously we can't do your interviews for you um but we can do it like a stimulator kind of interview for you so right. that we can um ask a question just like you're in an interview and you know give you scenario based questions it mm -hmm. might not be the same but obviously you can pick up examples from there that you can use in future interview we can teach you the star method so obviously when you're answering questions in your interview you think about the situation you think about the tax you think about the action and think about the results so those four things need to be present in your answer in when you're getting interviewed so those are the kind of techniques that we go over with you and then obviously the third packet that we do is we optimize the linkedin for you we do your cv and we we'll do your interview preparation so it's you can pick and match so we do cvs we do interview preparation we we'll do linkedin optimization and over over that at the end of the line we do your confidence boosting for you so it's another thing to then be at work and mm -hmm. you get people with the imposter syndrome you get people you know losing the confidence of okay actually i'm not in this place and i actually need to do this job how do I conduct myself? How do I act in front of my colleagues and stuff like that? So yeah. we don't just leave you, we mentor you. So you can do a three-month mentorship, a six-month mentorship, a 12-month mm -hmm. mentorship, depending on how confident you are and how often you want it to be. So those are the packages that we do currently. Right. Okay, okay. So if someone wants to help with their CV and boosting their, their confidence and preparing for interviews and stuff, are they do they pay for that service i mean what is what do you offer so at the moment um when we started it was a lot of pro bono service and then we started charging but right now we're going we're, um in the process of registering to be a charity so okay. that we can partner with other people and we don't have to charge a lot because i feel like you know people are in this position they, they they need this help and then i'm charging them for this or but then at the end of the day, because it's not just me i have a team of other people that are working with me that need to get paid as well so um, we do we do this but at the moment we are transitioning into a charity whereby we would be we will not be charging the people um, because we'll be doing a lot of fundraising and we're going to be partnering with a lot of people that would be able to offer their services for free but at the moment whilst the transition is still going through yes. we are having to pay the other people that we're still working with so at the moment if someone was to need our service depending on what they need we mm. do a lot of free things so like the cv one for instance is, yes. is free so if you want if you want us to take a look at your cv so we're not doing it for you you already have it all we're doing is taking a look at it and we're telling you change this put this so you're doing the work but okay. we are telling you what to do okay. but if you want us to actually write it for you mm -hmm. then you pay for that service you pay for that service okay that's yeah. understandable so yes. if you if you have an interview if you want us to stimulate you and run through it for you yes. um, for as many as possible, you pay for that service, but you can you can use it for as much as possible up to five times and you just pay once and that's it. So we can do as much interview stimulation for up to five times for you. Okay. So you pay, um, you pay for that mm -hmm. service as well. But right. if you just come in to say, this is my CV, I already have it done. Please can you take a look at it? Mm -hmm. um, I want to be a project manager. Does mm -hmm. this CV fit? into the project manager framework then yeah. i can look at that for you and i can say yes it does but this and this is missing take out that to do this once you do that send it back to me i have a look at it and then i send it back to you so that is totally free we right. don't charge for that but if you want me to sit down mm -hmm. and write it for you mm -hmm. then i charge for that and because in order to do that i would have sessions with you to kind of understand what you're doing 
where you're coming from, where you want to go to, then all that is what I put together. Obviously, right. because I'll talk to you, mm-hmm. look at your past experience, get your timelines, because I can't make things up. I need to put in what you've actually done, but mm. in, a, in a better way, so to say. So then that is what we charge for. Okay, okay, that's amazing. So you started this project when the lockdown started in 2019. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, yeah. Wow. The first wow. So mm-hmm. what's can you give us can you tell us one success story? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so success story. Um quite a few people have walked through career narrative changes and they, you know, they have testimonies, they have jobs today. Um yes. from from there. So during the pandemic that people were losing their job, a friend of mine, um, she she she's been searching for a job for over a year and she got her first job during the pandemic you know the pandemic started in, in March she actually got a job in July of that pandemic when people were losing their job she got a she job got a job so yeah that 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 does work I have um another person that transitioned from a different um department into another department and we're able to work with her on the CV and get her interview done um we had someone else that used our services um and she she got she only used assets for the interview preparation and she got um got a um, senior project manager role because that's what she wanted to, to go into she was a current project manager she was applying to be a senior project manager so obviously the language is different the manner reason is different mm-hmm. and you need to sell yourself at that senior level as well level. and yeah so yeah we that's we're getting great. there. That that's great. great. You know what? What you're doing, what you and your team, what you guys are doing is really, it's really good. You know, and the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of people, especially from our ethnic group, yeah, they start on a career path. <laughs> they get stuck. They can't grow. They can't they try. Yeah. Not not that they're not trying. Mm-hmm. They go for interviews, but somehow they don't get the job. Yeah. And, you know, when you don't have people around you to kind of motivate your learning experience, because as you're you're growing, you're supposed to be learning as Mm -hmm. well, um, Mm -hmm. equipping yourself with more knowledge. And not only that, even when you equip yourself, how do you use that knowledge to grow? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people around don't know how to help or, you know, develop this, you know, this instinct in them to go ahead and do this mm-hmm. thing so what you're doing is really good and honestly mm-hmm. um i think you need to you need to be out there you need to be out there I there are a lot of people that really I mean, we I really need, need your <laughs> service honestly i i my, my friend keeps telling me this she's like you're sitting on like a great business idea and it I'm, like, I'm doing it because i also do a full-time job as well like it's, it's hard <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, during the pandemic was a bit easy because you know um everyone was like locked down everyone was home and stuff like that but now um with two kids and a husband and a full-time job and then this is it's hard with the marketing bit but obviously people that know us and they referring our services mm-hmm. you know we, we are helping as much as we do but i know that i want to do more but i need like a, t- a, a more people on my team if that makes sense. <laughs> and the fact that I, I cannot do <laughs> Of course, you cannot do it all by yourself. You cannot do it all alone. But what Mm. you're doing is is like a gold gold mine that you're sitting on, like (laughs) you said. There are a lot of people who would need your service. Because I know people who have started on a career path 10 years Mm. and they're still doing the same thing. Not they're in the same organization. They change. Mm. They go to another organization. They try to move up the ladder, especially for us, um, the Black minority ethnic group mm-hmm. and maybe the Asian, the Asians I think they find it a little bit easier than we do yeah but for I us I think as you said the the language um and the development as well so we go to school we have masters we do oh, all yeah, these things yeah but then exactly. a lot of us are still sitting on the same we're still on the same bench you know they're not moving that, forward the we're still there experience. as officers yeah. or whatever yeah, we don't have the experience to back some of the things up because we are built to go to school and just keep going to school and mm-hmm. then you finish and then you're like, what how, what next? What next? When I started when I started my career in, in recruitment, 
I get really shocked in the first first few years because I'm talking to someone on the phone because right. I started in a recruitment agency and mm-hmm. I'm talking to someone on the phone and they're like, oh, so what do you do? What's the experience? And they tell me and they're applying for like maybe an assistant manager job or something, something like that. Mm-hmm. And then I'm telling them, oh, you know, you need to come into the agency, you need to register, you need to see you and stuff like that. And then they come into the agency and they register and the person I'm talking to on the phone suddenly turns up and this person is like 24 years old and I'm thinking, and you want to be yeah, an assistant manager already. I'm like, how, when, how did that happen? Because obviously <laughs> It's different for us. We go to school, we start from secondary school, we go to university, then that is not even enough. Then we do our masters. By the time some people finish, they are already 24, they are already 25 before they even start their career. Mm-hmm. Whereas people over here, you start working as soon as they're 17 or 18 or even yeah. 16. And that kind of helps to build up your work experience. Yeah. You know, and by the time you finish and together with your work experience, you're like in a much better better position mm-hmm. i remember when i started and um, when i was working i started off as a as an administrator and then yeah. i got into the nhs at some point and i was um the recruitment coordinator and so it's like oh i can't believe you have a master's and you're just a coordinator and i'm like because i don't have the experience not to be a coordinator i need to start from somewhere, somewhere yes. I, literally, I literally have the master's but i don't have the experience so yes it, i jumped quicker because obviously I have the qualification, but I, I was able to jump quicker. So I would just like do my administrative for like a year or like six months. And I'm like, yes, I, I get it now. And then I move on to the coordinator. I'm like, yeah, I get it now. I move on to the advisor. So I was able to move quicker. And because yes. obviously I had the, the knowledge and what needs to be done, what to, be um, done to, yes. to, to, to move. But some mm-hmm. people don't have that opportunity. Yes. So that is what we are here for, to kind of help you to navigate it, mm-hmm. to say, you know, yes, you've done this. You need to aspire to do that. And whilst you're here, in order to get there, you need to start putting this this, this in, in place. Yes, it's not like tomorrow you just wake up and say, yes, today I want to be a director. Before you be a director, these are what you need to do. And this, are, this is how to go about it, really. Yes. Oh, that's, re- yes, you're, you're very right, actually. You're very right, you're very right. I think this thing is in, is in the mind. It's mm. in the mind, and even though it's in the mind, it's something that we need to be preparing for. So like you yeah. said, we can't just wake up one day and say, okay, yes, that's it. Now I want I'm to- I'm done today, I'm <laughs> there. I want to run this company, excuse me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. So with the success story, I'm sure there would be stories on the other side that are not yeah, so oh, successful. Definitely. Can you tell us about one or oh, two definitely. of them? Um, I think with, with that is obviously it's hard work. And not everyone is caught up for that. And sometimes you might need to take a pay cut in order to get to where you want to go to. And not everyone is caught up for that. Um, I was working with someone. And um, they get paid really well. Um, yeah. they um, were working as a carer, and mm-hmm. when they're on ninth shift, you get if you work weekends and you're night shift, sometimes you get paid as much as 14 pounds an hour, 30 pounds yeah. an hour. Mm-hmm. So for someone that's good money, and you want to transition into the corporate world and you've not had any corporate UK experience, something had to give. So at this point, you either need to take away some time from this and volunteer your service. Um, either in another place so that you can use that voluntary service on your CV mm. as you're stepping, as your way into um, the corporate world, or you can find a part-time job in the corporate world whilst you're also part-time in doing your career job so that you're not losing both ways. But either way, you still need to take a pay cut because when you're starting and you're transitioning out and maybe depending on your level and your grade that you are, if yes. you're a young job seeker or someone that just started, mm. you'll be starting as an administrator or a, um, or a representative or a coordinator and your salary or per hour might just be like nine pounds or ten pounds that's a four pound pay difference some people are not ready for that which is understandable because there's bills to be paid there's family to be looked after there's people back home you know there's a lot of people waiting on you so you need to make a decision so some of the not so successful that they desire it but they don't have the the, the um they don't have the room to do it at this stage in their life because they need the money that they're currently making in that space to fill some gap which is also understandable so sometimes it's a painful pain to swallow something needs to give sometimes and if you're not ready for that to put in the hard work then you might not be able to get the reward that comes at the end of it do you know what you just said now is so interesting because as Africans, when we come to um, a more developed world, we want to work, we want to support our family, 
We want to do a lot of things for ourselves. There's a, so much that's expected of us. Yeah. So coming here to do voluntary work. Mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not part of it. Uh, well, I don't know if you know where I'm coming from. Yes, <laughs> definitely. So, yeah. So it's a little bit, um, it's it's a little bit a lot for them to mm -hmm. do. But as I said, yeah. I think it's it's something that we need to know. We need mm -hmm. to be aware that where we are, we there's this culture. You have to give sometimes. You give. Yeah. You get something in return, yeah. but it's not monetary. Yes. And sometimes you, you spend money to make money. It might not spend look like it money, right yes. now. Um, but it might not look like it right now, but you're sowing it and you're investing in yourself and you will definitely get the reward. Sometimes the benefit can be quantified and sometimes it cannot. The satisfaction derived from it afterwards. But again, not everyone is obviously ready um, in mentally and also financially for that conversation. That so it's is always so like, true. Yeah. That is mm -hmm. so true. But I mean, the, um, there's this lady friend of mine who... We actually did, we came to the country together um, okay. back then. She's a director now. And mm -hmm. um, I remember she took one year off. She was a manager at the time, but a junior manager, like a team leader. Mm -hmm. And she took one year off, one year off. She took it as a career break, but mm -hmm. she actually went to volunteer with some other organization. Okay. When she came back to a workplace within three months, she got another job, a promotion. Within yeah. a year, she was in a senior management position. position and that so. was it. She started going. Now she's a director. Within yeah. how many years? So I do understand what you're saying, to be honest. And I think it's something that we need to be aware of that sometimes, mm -hmm. like you said, something has, something has to give and we, we have to use money to look for money. Because then that book, that one year, she didn't hear anything. Exactly. But she so, got the experience that she wanted. Yeah. Wanted, yeah. Mm. And obviously now she's probably any more to make up for that she's one out. year. Of that, course, she's earning over, she over, up, so. over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hundred thousand so, pounds. Exactly. <laughs> Sometimes you know it doesn't have to be like you know it's, it's yeah it's just it's just um it's um. A conversation you need to have with yourself is an honest conversation no one can make that decision for you because mm. sometimes you might even take the gamble you might take the risk and it might not even work out that's but you know true. if you don't take the risk you you would not you, you would not, not get the results that's true mm -hmm. that is so true that is so true that's so true so who are your client group who do you render this service to so, uh we are very I get when I get asked that question, I think about it. And I'm thinking, we our door is open to anyone that needs our service. Basically, if you fill into that category and you need it, then we are here for you. But usually, our target audience are, um, um, you know, um, the ethnic minority group, which is um, we have less opportunity open out there for us. So you mm -hmm. need to be able to look for this opportunity where to look, and you need to be able to be ten times. Unfortunately, it's a sad truth. You need to be able to ten times better than your peers. Sometimes to be able to qualify for something that ordinarily, if you're not from the ethnic minority, it might just be easy for you to get. And obviously, being a woman is another, you know, conversation entirely. But um, so anyone basically that needs our service, we're there for you, but we are targeting the, the ethnic minority group, like we've said, and our target audience, again, is people that are transitioning into the UK working environment. So if you're newly here or you just moved here or um, you don't know where to start from, what to start looking, then we are your person. And again, we are also targeting like new entry into the market and people like in the mid level of their career. So we've been doing a particular job for five years now and think, okay, now it's time. I want to take that leap. So sometimes all you might need is just a confidence booster sometimes right. all you might need is just someone to look at you mm -hmm. and say yes this is what you need either you need to grow yourself or you need to do this course to help yourself because sometimes you you see yourself and you're thinking oh yeah I'm all that I should be able to do this job but someone needs to look at you and be like uh, you need to come back on earth you right now if they give you this job you cannot handle it because you don't have what it takes right now in order to have what it takes this is what you need to do x y and z so that is what we are here for so if you're just starting we're here for you. If you're mid-level and mm -hmm. transitioning into senior level, 
yeah. here, here for you as well. So those are the kind of um audience that we are capturing, but not saying we wouldn't entertain anyone else, you know. If you need us, we are here for you right. and we will try as much as possible to help. Okay. So um you're not just for the black asian um minority ethnic group even though that's your target audience yeah that's any our other yes ethnic any person can... can be exactly okay. we won't turn you away that our focus our target is the bank community and the minority community so when we are doing advertising mm-hmm. or we are um you know that is our focus but anyone else that comes across us and feel like oh yeah i feel connected to this group of people mm-hmm. and i believe they can help us yeah because at the end of the day we are reviewing cv we're doing interviews it's not person specific it's a skill that we will give you but we are, we just notice that people in this community need to help more because they are not exposed to that They're side not of exposed. things that, yes. that's why we we kind of focus it on that but that's Moment. not just the only thing. Okay. Like. What about, um, because you're saying for people who are just entering the um, work first market, work mm-hmm. first place in the UK, yeah. that they're just coming. What about people who are already here and yeah. they are stuck and they don't know how to move ahead or project exactly. ahead and they really yes, need the exactly. help? Yes, yes, definitely there as well, because when I said people are in the mid level of their career, so you must have been here doing your work, but you, if you're stuck in what you're doing and you need any change, then mm-hmm. we're here for you people that live in university because you know, sometimes when you leave uni, I remember when I left uni. I had no clue what to do yes. next, but everyone just felt like you know you join uni and that's it. That's it. So what next, you know, we're here for you as well to answer those questions like I used to say to people. It's okay not to know what you don't want to do. It's okay not to know what you want to do. You know, it's it's okay not to say, okay, yes, I want to be a doctor. It's okay not to say, I want to be, you know, a lawyer, an engineer. It's okay not to know. But the thing that is not okay is not to know what you don't want to do. You know, so sometimes you're in the process of figuring out what you want to do. Right. Whilst you're figuring out what you want to do, make mm-hmm. sure that you know what you don't want to do. Because if you don't know what you don't want to do, you just find out that, you just keep falling in a vicious cycle. So for right. instance, I, for instance, I don't know, I live in uni, I didn't know what I wanted to do in that sense. Mm-hmm. But I knew no thing on earth will make me be a doctor. I, I just know that. <laughs> <laughs> I know because I feel like... <laughs> uh, you I mean cannot, medical doctor? Medical doctor, I I know nothing on earth will make me do that. <laughs> nothing on earth will make me be a nurse, for instance, because I am not good in that aspect. So I already know. So I might not know what I don't want to do, but I already know what I didn't like. But because I feel like I I I I wasn't very good at maths growing up. So if I had gone to science class because yes. everyone was going there, mm-hmm. I would have felt like a failure because I would have been failing and it would have made me feel very bad. So yes. I knew I was, so I gave myself the hard truth. I was already struggling with basic maths at the kids. You now want me to come and do for that maths, how? So I already, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't bother touching myself. I right. admire them. My mom is a nurse. I love her. You know, she enjoys what she does, what she does hats up for them but i know that i wouldn't and i don't want to give run medication because i would not even remember all the things they need to remember mm. so that was i knew that i cannot be an accountant because like again i didn't like numbers i could care less about demand and supply is not my business as long as you know <laughs> <laughs> so i knew definitely that accounting and being in commercial class wasn't for me. Again, right. if I had followed my friends there or if mm-hmm. I had followed someone there, yeah. I wouldn't have been successful in that area. So I would have, again, it would have demotivated me. So I knew that, yes, I might not be, I, I don't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I was good at writing. I was very creative. I could read and I, I my comprehension was very lovely so I could read a 10 page and I will summarize it for you like a one pager so I knew that okay yes I might not know where that is getting me I was always very interested in people right, right from time I was a people person so mm-hmm. I, I got along with a lot of people so I 
my friends always say, you know, if, if for me to get angry with you, you really must have done something because I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. I will give you a very, very, very long rope. So yes. I found somewhere that I was comfortable in. So I went into the heart or humanities, so to say. So I didn't know where that was going to lead me, mm -hmm. but I figured the things that I was good at and that came together at that so i knew that yes i don't know where that is going to lead me so i don't know what i wanted to do but i knew things that i didn't want to do so it's yeah. always good to have a start point so if you know what you want to do what you want to do great but if you don't at least know what you don't like so yes. that you don't bother going into what you don't like except obviously i don't know maybe you're doing it to please someone but mm. that's another conversation but don't do things that doesn't give you joy basically because you're going to be sad yeah yeah yes that's a very candid advice and there's something mm -hmm. i just picked from what you said what i picked is that um you can't follow somebody else's path so mm -hmm. someone else might like like you said might want to be an accountant yeah, for exactly. example. and that person can be your best friend exactly but you don't and have to do what that it. person wants exactly you just have to figure out what you want. And even if you don't know it yet, think about your passion. What are you mm. passionate about? What do you like? Because work is stressful. But if you enjoy what you're doing, you don't mm -hmm. feel like, you don't yeah. feel it that much in that sense because you derive joy at it. And we spend eight hours a day at work or most for some people, you know. Mm. So you need to at least derive joy in what you're doing. Because if not, it just it just leads to other things and then you wake up in the morning and like oh why do i have to go to work yes, <laughs> i yes. hate all the people at work <laughs> <laughs> but you remember that oh my bill is coming at the end of the month <laughs> so you're like okay i have to go to work then <laughs> mm, mm, mm. so we we need to we need to have a passion for what we want to do mm -hmm. that's right oh that is so in fact that advice is <laughs> one of the best advice because some people go into a job that they don't like. They go into yeah. a job because it's a job and yeah. because it gives them the money. That's it. And once they mm -hmm. clock in, once they clock in in the morning, they are already looking forward to clocking out because they don't have a yeah. passion for it. No, no. Mm. Mm. Yeah. and you can only do that for so long so yes yeah, some people can do that they, they don't care you know they can do that but you can only do it for so long at some point you just you know not want to be there and it might just lead to other things and obviously and also not everyone aspires because something i've come to realize from working with different people is that not everyone actually aspire to grow in their wow. career some people are just comfortable they're Where just they comfortable are. to just be there and just work and i've come to realize that actually that might be okay for them right you know, some people mm, just want mm, enough mm. money yes they go on holiday to pay their bills they don't they're not fighting senior manager with you they're not they're not they don't want to be team leader they want zero responsibility whatsoever they just want to turn up work get their paycheck pay their bills go on holiday and that's it i've come to meet some people like that and I've come to think that if that's what they if that's what they want, then that's what they want. And that's that oh, that's okay. But you just mm. what do you want? That's the thing. So you need to figure out what you want. And if that's what you want, if that's how you build, you know, that if they're happy in that space, then yeah, some people just want to be taken care of. And that's okay as well. Okay. Some people want to live soft life. Mm. So that's okay. And some people want to have the Range Rovers, some people want to have the private jets, you know, and that's okay. If you want that, then you work for it. And if you don't want that, then you work for what you want. So it, it, it all centers to you. But you yes. cannot want the Range Rover and the private jet and be behaving like someone that don't want it. Some people don't want it, so they will put in the bare minimum. They will not bother trying to progress. You mm -hmm. want the fine, you want the designer bag you want the private jet experience mm. you want the medieval holiday you want exactly. the five star hotel feeling exactly. so you need to work for all those things so yeah mm, 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 mm. wow thank you so much for this advice in fact <laughs> thank you so so much so for people that want to reach you how can we reach you so i'm sure there'll be so many people wanting to reach you now <laughs> 
<laughs> so you can reach us on Instagram. So we are on Instagram at the Career Narrative Changes. So that's our name on Instagram. So just go the Career Narrative Changes at the spelled all in one go. Um, that's us on Instagram. Um, you can reach us via email, which is info at tcmc.co.uk. So that's info as an in I N F O at T C and C. So that's um the Career Narrative Changes. So the first letter of each word. Right. Um, dot co dot uk. So that's our email address, and I'm on LinkedIn as Abiola Iluwole as well. So you can reach us via the some three platforms. Okay, thank you so much. No thank worries. you for telling us how to reach you. I'm sure there'll be so many people wanting <laughs> to reach you. There's so many people who would like to change their career path and grow. Yeah. And, and, and not, like you said, some people don't want to grow. They are just comfortable where they are. But some mm-hmm. people are aspiring to grow, but they don't even know how to grow. So, okay. yeah, hopefully they'll be able to, to reach you and you'll be able to um, change what has been unchangeable for them for so many <laughs> years. Long. I will be hearing all the success story. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so, have you got any inspiring advice for our, our um, viewers out there who wants to do something similar to what you're doing or want to grow um i think it's just um i think for me would just be um consistency and just walk you you have to you have to walk before you can leap before you can run because you know a lot of people see people and they're like oh if this person can do it i can do it which is great but remember that this person has put in years of experience sometimes they put in eight years they put in nine years sometimes Mm -hmm. they put three four five so you don't just think you know um take things at face value so yes you can look up someone as a mentor but remember that you know they've put in the work so if you want to be that or if you're aspiring to be that then you need to put on the put on the work as well don't just you know talk the talk if you're talking the talk then you need to walk the walk as well so that is what i would say Mm-hmm. and um another thing i would say is there's nothing too scary honestly um to do as long as you put your mind to it and it's never too late you can do it if you want to do it that the, the first question do you want it if you want it then you can do it and nothing can stop you except yourself there will be many self you know doubt there will be a lot of things along the way there will be a lot of obstacle but you will conquer them one at a time and mm-hmm. set milestones for yourself don't just like go running so set milestones for yourself so first thing first okay if i achieve this then celebrate that's great that's your win your story no one can mm-hmm. take it away mm-hmm. onto the next one so yeah yeah that's what I was- oh thank you so no. much i mean what you just said is liking to some to like a baby so you give birth mm-hmm. to a baby there's a process Okay. Babies don't just come into the world and start working, start running, and start doing everything that they want to do. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's Thank right. you so much for joining no us today. Thank you for telling us your journey into the <laughs> career narrative. Um, thank you so, so much because you've already inspired me and I'm sure <laughs> our viewers there, <laughs> you've inspired them as well. I mean, you've inspired me to... Um, you know, there are things that I can do still, even though I, I might think that, okay, I've got it, but there are things I can still do and I can mm-hmm. still learn. And there are people who can help me grow. So mm-hmm. I, I shouldn't just stay where I am thinking, okay, that's it. Um, I don't have help. I don't have support. Um, mm-hmm. But there are people out there who can support me, who can support other yeah. people as well. Thank you yes. so much for your word mm-hmm. of, of advice. And thank you for coming on our show today. No worries. Thank you. Thank you for having (laughs) me. Bye, everyone. I'm sure you've enjoyed today's program. And please reach out to Abiola if you have any question or or any anything that you want to discuss in terms of your career path or change. Thank you, Abiola. All right. Thank you. Bye. (laughs) Bye. Thank you for joining us today on Mission to Inspire. Subscribe if you have not already done so. Like, comment, leave a message. Let's stay connected. Let's jointly inspire the world.